Good morning, everyone. My name is Bishop Lafer. I am the marketing developer analyst here at IDX Broker. Today I'm joined by Ben. He is a technical support specialist, and we are here to talk to you about how to master your marketing with IDX Broker. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just get started. We're here to talk about marketing today. Specifically, we're going to talk about, we're going to start with geotargeting display ads in Google AdWords. The example that I am using for today is as if I were to be running an open house this Saturday, I'm going to show you how to make some ads that will help drive foot traffic to your open house. And then we're going to talk about remarketing as well. So to start with in Google AdWords, oh, also just to make sure everyone knows uh, this this specific webinar is an expansion on another webinar we've done previously. So in order to be successful with the information presented here, you will need to have seen the measuring success with Google tools, number one, which in that webinar, we went over how to create an analytics account and create an AdWords account and link them together. Also, in order to make the most out of this information, you'll need to have a Facebook business manager account and an ad account. So we'll just dive right in. The first example we're going to do is how to create a display network ad and then geotarget it in AdWords. When when you go to create a campaign, we choose type in this drop down. We want display network only. And then on the right side, it has marketing objectives, which is or no marketing objectives. So if you choose no marketing objective, then all options are available to you. Or if you choose the marketing objectives radio button, then Google will suggest to you these different types of marketing objectives and only the settings that you'll need to be successful in those will be available. So for this one, I just want to build awareness. I want to get my ad out in front of as many people within a certain geo-targeted location as possible for my open house that I'm running on Saturday. So I've chosen build awareness because I want customers to see my ad. Once you choose an objective and you click next, then it will bring up a location targeting first. And I want to, I didn't have an address for an open house, so I just chose Eugene, Oregon, and then I chose a 10 mile radius around around Eugene. 10 miles is the smallest radius that they'll let you choose. And then once you've clicked done here, you see where it says locations here. Let me choose 10 miles around Eugene, US. That is the only spot I want to show this ad because again, it's just an open house that I'm doing on Saturday from one to five. And then language options, I want to choose English because I'm not showing ads anywhere else other than in the United States. My bid strategy is going to be viewable CPM, which stands for viewable cost per impression. You get charged per thousand impressions with display campaigns. Viewable CPM means that in order to get charged for the impression, the ad has to be visible above the fold on a website. So with just regular CPM bidding before you could get charged for impressions if the ad loaded in a page, with viewable CPM, you only get charged if someone sees the ad above the fold in a web page. And then my budget is how much money am I willing to spend per day? I'm willing to spend $10 a day because I have $20 that I've allotted to this specific campaign for promoting my open house. And then a little further on, and I want to schedule my ads to only show during the most effective times. So if my open house is on May 5th, I want to show ads the day before on Friday from, if you look, I chose 6 p.m. because that's when I figured people would be getting off work until 11 p.m. And then Saturday, I'm gonna show ads from 8 a.m until an hour before my open house is over with the intention of this will create more foot traffic to my open house. All the other settings I just leave default, optimize, pref prefer better, best performing ads, frequency capping. I'm not using a frequency cap. And because I have such a small radius, if this was a display campaign I was running for a long time, I would choose a fre frequency cap, which is just the number of times one single person can see your ads. Like typically I wouldn't want someone to see my ad more than three times in a day. But for this specific use, I don't think that a frequency cap would be useful. And then the digital content label, I'm not using any labels. And then the very bottom down here, I'm going to give it a campaign name of open house and then click save and continue. And then I'm going to create an ad group. In this example, I just named the ad group open house, but it would be a better practice now that I've looked at this. It would be a better practice to name your ad group by the type of targeting that you're doing. So a a better name would probably be geolocated targeting. And then the max VCPM bid is $2. So that's how much money am I willing to pay for a thousand impressions? The $10 that we put in on the previous page, that is I'm willing to spend $10 on these ads in a day. This max VCPM bid means that I'm willing to bid up to $2 for a thousand impressions. And then I enter my landing page. So this is just a fake site, realestatesite.com slash open house. 
this is important. The slash open house is important because we're going to build a remarketing list based on that URL in a little while. Choosing how to target my ads, we already did. We chose, we're using location targeting and with a 10 mile radius and then targeting optimization. I just left this check. You don't necessarily have to for a campaign like this. It's only going to run for two days. That's really not going to make any difference because there won't be enough data for the optimization to work. But if this was a campaign that you're going to run for an extended period of time, like say you use save links on your site and you have a save link for a specific neighborhood or you have a save link for properties with or waterfront properties or something like that and you wanted to run display ads with content around that neighborhood or around waterfront properties then it would be a good idea to use targeting optimization if you use aggressive targeting you will end up paying more money just keep that in mind and then once we've put all these settings in we hit save and continue oh actually this is if we were to let me go back one more. So if we were to choose how to target your ads and we wanted to do segment it a little further, then you could either use demographics or interest in remarketing. And this is just an example of one. So there is an in-market audience, right? And I just searched for in the in-market audiences, home buyer. And down here where it says houses for sale, that is one in market audience that I might use because the idea being that if someone has a house for sale, they're probably looking to buy a house too, but that's totally option, optional. It's just an example of how you can further segment your ads or your targeting for your ads. Once you hit save and continue, you're brought to the prompt where you actually create an ad or upload an ad. So for the display network, Google has tools where you can create a dynamic HTML5 ad and you just like choose a background color and put some text in. I actually went a different route and I just created an image ad. So this specific image ad, this is called a skyscraper, 160. 60 pixels by 600 pixels. Gilbert just asked, sorry, do I go through Google AdWords or through the IDX dashboard? For this specific example, we're going through the Google dashboard or not through IDX. So this is actually setting up ads in AdWords. Cool, so this specific ad is 160 by 600 pixels. It's called a skyscraper. I'm only putting one image in because I'm not actually running a campaign, but if I was to run a campaign to promote an open house, I would probably use a mobile leaderboard, a leaderboard, a skyscraper, and then a medium rectangle. In my experience with AdWords, medium rectangles tend to perform the best followed by mobile leaderboard the idea being with the mobile stuff is medium rectangles show up on mobile and mobile leaderboards show up on mobile skyscrapers and regular leaderboards will only show up on a desktop if you're using geolocated targeting for 10 miles around a house typically you're probably going to be showing ads on a lot of phones so you want to do images that would be optimized for ads on phones. Once you've created, once you've uploaded the ad, you go into, this says save and continue billing here because I just created a dummy account. But if you already had your billing set up, then it would just take you into the campaigns. Your ads would be submitted for approval. And then once they're approved, they would start running. And then I mentioned that we were going to do a remarketing audience. So if you are showing ads and people are coming to that landing page, the realestatesites.com slash open house, say we want to show more ads to those people. How can we capture the people who came to that landing page? and then remarket to them. So this would be how we do it. Within Google Analytics, in this middle column, which is the property settings, there's this audience definitions, and then under audience definitions is audiences. Go into here, and then we want to create our first audience. In order to do that, we have to enable remarketing. When you enable remarketing, you create your first audience, all users. So that's just all users that come to your website. So Alexandra just asked a question. How do you create, how can you create a landing page? That would be something that you do in IDX Min. You can either use a save link or it really depends on what your implementation is. Are you using a WordPress? Is it a Wix site? You could do it using a save link. Using a save link is what I would probably do. Oh, if you are using a WordPress then you can just create a new page or you can create a, a different page. Entre pages is great for landing pages. I'm not sure what Entre pages is. I've never worked with that. But if you are, just be aware if you are using like a third party solution for your landing pages, rather than having it on your website, then you can't really do this remarketing stuff. So remarketing is good because not only can you like, for this example, we're gonna capture the traffic of people who came to our landing page from our ads. But also, like we talked about earlier, if you were using a save link for properties of pools or for a specific neighborhood, then you could capture all the traffic to the people of people who went to the that save link and then you can create ads with custom tailored content for that so like if you you have a save link for houses with pools then you could create a creative that has a pool and then show those ads to those people who have already been on your website and those ads will just kind of follow them across around the internet so once you enable remarketing it'll take you through setting up your first audience which is all users so everyone who comes to your website will go onto that list that would be good to use for targeting re remarketing just a generic ad campaign because you can assume say pretty much 
much safely assume that if someone's come to your website and are looking at houses on your site, you know they're interested in buying probably, right? So then you can just do a generic campaign and remarket back to them. Once you enable remarketing, it asks you where you want the remarketing list to be available. You want it to be available in AdWords and also in analytics. And then once it's been created, you see this all users list in your audiences list. And that's literally all users. So Susan makes a good point to remind everyone to have different landing pages for each campaigns. Uh, having a page for open houses could be something that changes regularly, but can be promoted consistently. So yeah, you could have one page for open houses, realestatesites.com slash open houses, and then you just post all of the open houses that you're going to have on that page. Or like I was talking about the save links. So if you're a, a realtor in Florida and you are selling like waterfront properties or something like that, then your landing page would be your save link for the waterfront properties or your like neighborhood page, save link for a specific neighborhood. But now we're going to get back to actually segmenting the remarketing list, the audience itself. So come back to the audiences. You say you want to create a new audience and then under audience definition, you click create new right here. And then we want to set up a condition. So if the page contains open dash house, then we know that all of the traffic to that page came from our campaigns that we're setting up now. So if we wanna remarket to those people specifically, then we want the page that contains open dash house. So then you click apply and you choose what your membership duration by default, it's 30 days. I like to expand it to 90 days. I think the maximum is 540 days. I don't know how relevant ads will be to someone who visited your site 540 days ago. So I typically just stick with 90 days. And then you give your audience a name. So since this is the page contains open house, I'm gonna call it open house traffic. And then click next step. It asks me where I want these lists to be available. I want it to be available in AdWords so that I can run campaigns and target specifically to these users. And then I want it to be available in my real estate or my analytics. Yeah, in my analytics as well. So once you've done that, you'll get success. And then it says, what's next? Create a remarketing campaign in AdWords. That's specifically why we just created this audience. And then once you go back to your audiences, you'll see that you have the all users list and you have open house traffic. And so that's how you know you've done it successfully. Now that we've talked about AdWords a little bit, we're gonna jump into Facebook. Geo-targeting ads in Facebook is very similar. We come into your ads manager and then select the ad account you wanna run the ads in. Click this green create button here and it'll bring you to this page. Choose an objective. For this example, we're gonna do a traffic consideration because we just wanna drive people to that landing page, the realestatesite.com slash open house. Give your campaign a name and this is just gonna be open house promotion. Our actual physical location at IDX Broker is 100 East Broadway in Eugene and then I just chose 10 miles around that. If you look over here on the right side, it'll give you what your estimated daily results are. If you wanted to further segment this down so that you're not showing it to people who are age 18 to 65 plus, but maybe like a little bit older or something. You, If you have more insights into the home buyers in your area, then you could further segment by demographics here. Also, there's the detailed targeting. So this is just an example of how you could also segment it. Within Facebook, there is a first time home buyer audience. And so you could just choose that first time home buyer audience. And you can see like, if we go back one page, before I added the first time home buyer, my reach was 1700 to 5000 impressions with 21 to 82 clicks. And then I I further segmented it by first time home buyer and then it went to a thousand to twenty five hundred impressions with thirteen to seventy one clicks. And then once you've chosen your targeting, you set a budget. I just put a budget of fifty dollars. You can also schedule your ads. It's not as granular in Facebook as it is in AdWords, but I just said that I want to start it on May 4th at 12 p.m. and I want to run it until an hour before my open house is over on Saturday. And then optimization for ad delivery would be link clicks because I want people to visit my landing page. And then bid strategy being lowest cost. And then when I get charges by impression, you can change out the click if you want, but I'm this is more of a brand recognition campaign or just build awareness, right? I just want to get my ad in front of a lot of people. So I want the impressions, not the clicks for this specific example. And then once you've chosen, chosen all of your settings for your ad group, now we come to actually making the ad. If you don't give your ad, if you don't give your ad a name, Facebook will automatically generate one for you. It'll always be default name dash traffic or whatever your campaign objective was. You choose your Facebook page and Instagram account you want to show ads on, and then you choose the type of ad that you want to do. For this example, I'm going to do a single image ad. When you do a single image ad, then you have these options available to you. You get text, which comes in here. You get your website URL, which is the landing page that you want it to go to, and then the headline that goes here, and then this display link 
is what URL actually shows on the ad. So this right here, and then scroll down the further down the page and you choose a pixel that you want to associate the traffic with. The pixel is kind of, it's how face, what Facebook uses to actually build remarketing lists. In AdWords, you use analytics. In Facebook, you use a pixel. So now we're gonna go through how to create and install a Facebook pixel. In the Facebook business manager, up here in the top where it says events manager, click that, there's an all tools thing and then there's an audiences. And under audiences, it says pixels. You click on pixels and then you come in before you have an actual pixel, this is the page that you're shown. You click create a pixel. And then depending on who manages your website, if you do it yourself, then you might want to manually install a code yourself. If you are using tag manager or something like that for your analytics installation, you there are instructions to do that as well. Or if you have like a dev partner or someone else manages your website, then you can just email the instructions. We're gonna go through how to manually install it yourself. So you click on that second option, scroll down, and this is the actual code here. So you click to copy that code to your clipboard. And then you come over to IDX Broker. So this part is in your IDX Broker dashboard. Under designs and then under wrappers for global, there's this section here for header HTML. This is where the pixel code gets pasted. So this is what it looks like once you've pasted it in. And now that you've pasted this pixel in, you can build audiences in Facebook. So we'll go over how to create a custom audience in Facebook. So just like we went, click up here in the top left to, and then go to custom audiences, create a custom audience. We want a custom audience based on website traffic. So just like we did before, or we want to include traffic that's only to that specific landing page, our realestatesites.com slash open houses. So where it says all website visitors here, you would click that drop down and change that to people who visit specific web pages in the past 30 days. And then the URL contains open dash house. And so that's how we get all the traffic to that one specific page. And then we can build an audience based on that. And then next time we want to run an ad, we can target this list specifically. So I know we just moved really quickly. That was a lot of stuff to cover. Did anybody else have any questions? Yeah, uh, Glenn had a question. Oh, what was Glenn's question? Uh, retargeting, is there a charge? So the, the charge associated, the cost associated would be the same as if you were just running any other kinds of ads. So if you're running a display campaign, you pay by impression or by click. If you're doing it in Facebook, then you pay by click or impression. The cost is the same as it would be if you were targeting using other targeting types. It's just when you do retargeting, you know that you have higher quality audiences because if someone has come to your webpage already, then you know that they're interested in your product. And so then you can retarget ads towards them. And then Jim Hood said, sorry, I missed the answer. When will this recording be available? Probably tomorrow at the latest. How does the, Marco asks, how does the Facebook pixel work? Would it stop working after the ad is no longer active? No, the Facebook pixel would not stop working after the ad is no longer active. You can continue to collect data. So Pix Facebook collects information about people. So if you're logged into Facebook and you're browsing the internet, then Facebook knows what web pages you're browsing. So you can, even if you're not running ads, you can still have a pixel on your site and collect information about users. So if someone comes to a save link on your site, you can create a list for that. They come to your open house landing page, you can create a list for that. You don't actually have to be running ads to be using a Facebook pixel and collecting data. And then yes, Jim, the link will be sent out via email. No, no problem. Absolutely. Um, did anybody else have any questions by chance? Okay. Also, we have a webinar in two weeks. I'm not exactly sure what the topic is, but also, I know that I have another webinar on June 26, which is Measuring Success with Google Tools Part 2, where we're going to go over a little bit more about with your remarketing campaigns, what KPIs or key performance indicators are important, and then building reports around them, how to tell if your marketing efforts have been effective or not, that kind of thing. A thing. So again, that will be on June 26. Can we send an email to join for the follow-up? Gilbert, is that what you're asking? Yes we can send an email for the attendees of this webinar. We can send everyone who attended this webinar an email to join the follow-up in June. Did anybody else have a question? All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody else has any questions. Um, I appreciate all of your time. Yes, Rolanda, the recording will be on the website. We will also send out an email with a link to the recording. So it, it will definitely be available for you, probably not until tomorrow. Also, I can make the slides available. So in that follow-up email, I'll uh, make the slides available as well. Once again, thank you everybody for your time. Very much appreciated and we will see you soon.